Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 today and I'm talking about looks and specifically I'm talking about how I used the looks when I first started using Luminar to teach me the app Luminar. And that is I use looks which are pre-built, you know, presets if you will, that come with the product. I use them as a starting point, as kind of a launch pad into my exploration of the app and I use them to figure out how the filters worked or the tools, you know, what sliders did to the different, uh, you know, parts of a photo. Um, and I just use them as a launch pad. So I thought I'd kind of talk about that, walk through it and show some examples of how that helped me get up to speed with Luminar. When I first got the app, like three or four versions, whenever it was version one, I guess. So we're in version four, so three versions ago. Um, and it's, you know, it's easy, it's simple, it's straightforward. And some people think of a look or they're also called presets depending on the app. But some people think of those as, as cheating or, you know, whatever, where, you know, you're using somebody else's idea. Um, and I don't think of that at all. I think it's a great way to give you a creative direction for where you may want to go with the photo. And as I already said, I think it's a great way to learn the product and uh, help you get really up to speed with Luminar quickly. And also, I think it's a, a great way to help you rapidly edit photos. Sometimes you come back from a shoot and you're trying to maybe get some sample images to a client or maybe you're just trying to get some uh, images quickly to post to Flickr or Facebook and share with friends or whatever. And you may come back and edit them more slowly or I should say more seriously later, but a quick click with a look and you can stick it on a photo and move on is a great way to uh, at least give you a creative direction or uh, give you a sample photo to start with. So with that, I want to kind of dive into this. Here's a photo and this is just a street shot from London. I love London and I love street shots. Looks are up here. Now I did a video a while back in my tutorial series. I'll put a link to there talking about looks. I'm not going to go into how do you rename them? How do you delete them? How do you share them? How do you move them from the previous app? I talked about that in that uh, previous video a few months ago. In this one, I just want to talk about you know, using looks to launch your exploration of the app. And so let me do that. So I'm going to start over here and a number of looks come with uh, look collections, I, sh I should say, come with the app. So I'm going to start with essentials and, you know, I click on that and it gives you all these different things. Uh, and you can kind of flip through and as you click on them, you can kind of see what it is. So maybe there's a haze removal, one click and it'll apply it to the photo. Hey, it looks pretty good. Um, you'll notice that certain um, filters or tools are highlighted and those are the tools that are used to build the preset. So the way I learned it was I would click on a look that I liked and said, okay, I like this haze removal. What the hell's in it? Well, I go over here and I click on light and I say, okay, looks like a little increase in exposure, took down the highlights, uh, bumped up the shadows. Good to know. AI enhance. Looks like they used AI accent. And what do they do with landscape enhancer? Dehaze. Oh, that makes sense. It's called haze removal. Um, and so I did those kind of things. Now you might think, um, that, you know, street is the, is the best category to go to because this is a street photo and sure, you know, you might find some great looking, uh, looks here or presets and I'll, I'll choose central park. That looks pretty neat. Come over here. What does it have? AI enhanced. That's it on this tab. Looks like creative is uh, highlighted. Let's click on that. Ah, it's got a LUT in it. Okay. Analog look 003. That appears to be a LUT that is not included as a default LUT, right? So it gives you, some of these looks give you LUTs, here we go. Um, and um, they, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. It gives you more creative experimentation. So that's something to think about. But even though I'm in the street category, you know, it doesn't hurt to try the portrait uh, tab and take a look at those because some of these like artistic portrait, let's see what that does. That's pretty cool, kind of a faded, kind of a vintage look. How do they make it? Well, let's go back to the first tab. Light, color, details enhancer. That's kind of weird. I'm looking at it. I mean, it's it's kind of crisp there, but because it's faded, I don't think it details, but they took down small and large, but bumped up medium. Okay, something to think about. What did they do over here? Ah, matte look. Okay, because matte look is kind of faded, right? I did a video about matte look. I'll put up there. Uh, and mystical, which creates some of that shadow. So here's what I do. I start going into these and turning them on and off and say, okay, what is mystical? Okay, that's off. Let me turn mystical back on. Okay, it added a little bit of contrast, a little bit of shadow. Let's take a look at matte look because I think that one had a big impact. Let's turn that off. There you go. Wow, that is a big impact and turn it back on. Yeah, okay, so that had a big impact. And so that was how I started doing it 
And then of course, um, let me get over here to Dreamy Portrait. Um, I kind of like that look, that's pretty neat. It's kind of a, a faded, not faded, um, fuzzy kind of, well dreamy I guess is a good word for it. So what does that contain? Well it has light, let's go in there and look. Okay, so a tiny bit of smart contrast, that's it. Not much going on there, color. Okay, they took down the vibrance. How do you take down the vibrance, man? I, I don't always go up on vibrance. Anyway, um, vignette, okay, I can see that. Yeah, that, that looks like there's a little bit of vignette. Let's turn it off and see how big of an impact vignette has. Okay, obviously the dreamy part is still in place, but the vignette definitely makes a little bit of a difference, so good to know. Also note, there's no inner light, so this is where I might say, hey, you know what? I wanna kinda customize this because I like that look, this dreamy portrait, and hey, again, I'm in the portrait tab, but I'm creating, uh, customizing a portrait look for a street scene. So um, I might take size down because maybe I want a little bit more vignette. Maybe I want to choose subject and you know, I, I want to put it on that bus. I'm kind of liking that, but then I go over to light and I'm like, you know, it's a little too warm for my taste. Maybe I should bring that down, cool it off a little bit because to me, I want it to look a little bit more like it's twilight. And actually, though it was late afternoon, um, it's not twilight looking enough. So here I'm kind of customizing the temperature to bring that down a little bit. Uh, maybe I want to take the highlights down because, you know, it's really too bright in that sky. Okay, now we're kind of getting somewhere. That's starting to make a big impact. Now I'm going to go back to vignette. I'm going to increase inner light a little bit more. And I'm going to feather a little bit more because I don't want the vignette to be too tight of a shape around there. I want, to, uh, I want the transition to be pretty smooth. Um, and I'm gonna go away from roundness, um, which is gonna, that's actually gonna impact the shape. I shouldn't have said that. Feathering is the transition, roundness is the shape, right? I did a vignette video if you wanna check that out. So now I'm getting somewhere, I really like that, but you know what, I haven't gotten to the dreamy part, Jim. Well look, two more tabs are highlighted, so let's go over there and check them out. Glow, hmm, I wonder what that's doing. Let's see, turn that off. Wow, look at that, quite a difference. So. Glow had a, you know, made the photo kind of glow, made it kind of dreamy. So, and specifically, it's soft focus. Hey, that makes sense. It's dreamy because it's kind of hazy, a little not clear. Yeah, it's not clear because it's soft focus. Um, it would look totally different, I suspect, if you went with soft glow. Let's try that. Yeah, very different, right? So, um, same tool, glow, but you got different um, options to choose here, soft focus really works for me in this case, I like that. But hang on, I'm getting over here, portrait, portrait enhancer. Well, oh, hey, it makes sense. Remember, I'm in the portrait tab, even though it's a street scene or a street photograph. Let's turn this off because there's not gonna be any face detection going on here. So let's see if that has an impact on the photo. Yeah, no impact whatsoever. So in fact, you could just turn that off or just reset it back to zero like that. Uh, and effectively turn that off and that tab will go uh, unbolted because I've turned off the filter there. Um, but I'm really liking that look. I mean, just remember where I started, that's my base photo before any edits and that's my current state. I like it, so I've taken a portrait look, applied it to a street photo, customized it, I really like it, I'm gonna save it. So it's called Dreamy Portrait. I'm gonna make a new one called Dreamy Street. And that for me is really the next step, which is go through, find presets or looks that are built into Luminar that you like, and then start customizing them for different kinds of photos and creating looks that you like yourself. So then you can go to user Luminar looks, and you can see I've got quite a few here that I've kind of been playing with and experimenting with. There's Dreamy Street. Um, I kind of like this Essentials. This is kind of fun. Let's go look at this Essentials too. Wow, very colorful, maybe a little too much. So this might be where you go back in and you customize some of this. Maybe the saturation's too high, maybe. Um, you know, go in here, what else is there? Landscape enhancer, there's a lot of golden hour. Maybe we turn that off and that tones it down a little bit because the buildings are now not as yellow. So this is what I'm talking about. You just go in and you play around with the various tools. You get to looks that you like and I'm gonna go back to Dreamy Street because. I gotta be honest, I really like that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but go in and find looks you like, regardless of what category. It can be a portrait uh, look, and you stick it on a street scene like this, and you come up with something that you think is pretty cool, like in this case. And it really got me to the look that I was going for, which is kind of a little bit moody, a little bit dramatic, more of a closer to twilight kind of look, versus 
that, which is brighter, obviously, but also warmer. So I cooled it off, added some mood, um, and that was really just basing it on a preset and then customizing it a little bit further with a light tool uh, and more vignette and that sort of thing. So it's a very powerful way, I think, a very simple and straightforward way to get into the app, start experimenting, start learning, and just clicking on these different looks and moving sliders around, and it's gonna quickly get you up to speed. Now, I've got a, a lengthy list of videos here, as hopefully you've been watching, but this was the way that I went about learning Luminar the very first time several years ago, and uh, I still use looks all the time. Some people, like I said, say you're cheating or using someone else's idea. I don't think that at all. I've made numerous looks pack. I'm working on a looks pack that may be coming out at some point if I ever get time to uh, actually customize these and, and make them um, the way I want them to look. But I personally am a big fan of looks and I think they can help you really speed up your education in the application and that's why I like them so much. And one other thing that I have often done is if you maybe you go into a look, uh, let's go back to essentials here and let's just pick one that we like. Um, let's see here, which one do we like? Um, I'll just take super sharp, why not? And let's see what's in it. Okay, uh, it's a little too much for my eyes, but it's got light, it's got color, and it's got detail enhancer. So what I would often do is then say, okay, light, color, and detail enhancer, and then I would go in and reset the image. I would say adjustments, reset, light, color, detail enhancer. Now, I recommend having look through, I didn't do this, of course, um, but I, I recommend looking through these various uh, filters and then um, trying to recreate that look and see if you can come up with it. So detail enhancer, you know, it all seemed to be kind of detailed. So I'm just gonna give all three of them a little bit of a push. Um, color, uh, I'm not really sure, cause like I said, I didn't really look at it, but I'm just kind of winging it here and light seemed a little bit warmer, maybe even seemed a little bit brighter and maybe a tiny bit of contrast. That's not gonna be the same look as uh, this super sharp, but it gives you an idea. Um, you can use that as a visual cue to go recreate the look. And so it's just another way to play with them and experiment and have fun. And that's really what it's about for me is get in there, experiment, experiment, experiment. I think the best way to learn anything is just by doing stuff with it. And that's how I learned Luminar. And I think it's the best way to learn Luminar because if you come in and you just start looking at uh, all these tabs, let me close the looks panel so you can see bigger. But if you start looking at all these tabs and all these filters and you start saying, okay, well, B and W can, okay, black and white conversion, I get that. Color, okay, I kind of get that. But especially if you're new to Luminar, you might be like, light? Like, of course there's light. I mean, it's a photograph. It's made on light. You know, you start looking at landscape enhancer, you're like, what's full, what does DHA, what does Golden Hour do? Um, it can be confusing because you know what? There's a lot of stuff in this app and it's awesome stuff and I use it every day so I'm a huge fan. Um, but it can be overwhelming I think at first and so that's why I think looks are such a great jumping off point. I don't necessarily say they're always a one click perfect solution for every photo because guess what? They're not. But they are a great way to give you uh, a direction to head in with your editing and that's how I use them today. I use looks that are built in, I use look, looks pack packs that Luminar uh, or Skyloom has given us as users over the years. I use my own looks packs that I've made and sell. I use my own looks packs uh, or looks that I've been creating here in Luminar 4. And I use them as a jumping off point because the other thing it does is it gives you the ability. To, so I'm gonna go look at like uh, London Calling because hey, I'm in London. And so I can look at this, I immediately get a visual cue of what this photo could look like. I really like this look, Bodium Castle. I'm gonna click on that, close looks, and man, I'm liking that look. Let me get that back on there. There we go. It's a little too pinkish purple, but hey, I already know I can fix that by pulling down tint a little bit. So that's gonna pull that back under control. And you'll see that there's light, AI enhanced color, and then on Pro, there's color enhancer. Then you got this little suitcase. So the suitcase, as it says, is deprecated. That only shows up if you're using a look that includes a filter that's not now built into Luminar 4. So let's click on that and see what it is. Ah, tone and clarity. No surprise there's smart tone. I use it, I used to use it on every photo. You can kind of see. And so that gives you an idea of what those have happened uh, or what those have done to the photo. But the cool thing is, even though these filters or tools are not included in Luminar 4, 
if they show up in the deprecated tab, you still have the ability to go move them around. So see, I can do exposure, blah, 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 that sort of thing. So they still work and are editable, even though they're no longer built into Luminar 4. Clarity, uh, 34, so a little bump there. Anyway, that was, I was going to say a quickie, but that was not very quick. But that was how I use looks and how I educated myself on the app. And I just think it's a great way to learn the app. It's a lot of fun. And honestly, you come up with stuff that you might just say like, that's a really freaking cool look. And that's what I've done in my uh, user folder here. I've got all these different looks that I'm working on. And I've just been creating things and saving them and working on them. And uh, I'm going to go customize this one now and save it because I think it looks really good in this photo. That's it, my friends. I just wanted to dive into looks and how I use them to educate myself and how I think it's a great way for you to do the same. And I hope that it's helpful. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Tell YouTube that you like what old Jim here is doing. And I'll be back soon, my friends, with more. Don't hesitate to leave me a comment as well. And I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.